How are we doing today ladies and gentlemen? I know it's less than a couple weeks like I thought I was going to do, but I have my review ready for you on the ATV Flash, uh, basically hacked hack for the uh, Apple TV, so second generation that is. Not third generation yet, but maybe soon. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So we're back to where we were in the previous video. If you haven't watched the tutorial of how to actually set this up on your computer, on your, uh, your Apple TV, go back to, uh, and maybe I'll actually set a, a link to it in the notes here, but to a previous video, basically ATV setup and tutorial. Um, this is going to be the review on the ATV flash system for the Apple TV 2. I've only been using it a few days. There are some things I really kind of like about it, and there are some things I really don't like at all about it. Um, and to be honest, it's up to you whether or not it makes sense to do to your Apple TV. Now, obviously, the nice thing is is that it is un it's reversible. You can remove it, so it's do it and try it and see if you like it. Um, do I think it's worth the uh, cost to this to uh, to do it? Uh, you know, yes and no. To be honest, uh, I'm glad I did it actually, and uh, I actually may keep it, but I'm thinking about actually reverting for at least a little while because a lot of the things that I can do, I can do just airplay from my iPad. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So here's all the systems that I have actually set up currently. Although one of them I am having really tough time to get to work, just errors out or freezes on me all the time. And that is the XMBC. Now I've used XMBC in the past and I actually thought, I believe I used it on the previous version of ATV flash I installed uh, several months ago. And, uh, However, I'm, it's not set, working for me. It, f today, actually, I finally got it to uh, find my shared file, but it just gives me an error every time I try to do it. So I'm not going to have a full review on that one, but to be honest, everything that I found that I like is going to be Plex. That's the one that I think is the, the mother of all goodies. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start by, uh, first, we're going to go to the maintenance module. Maintenance is what actually comes, that's going to be the first thing you, you do once you get the ATV flash installed. In the maintenance, that's where you're actually going to sign up for our, basically, install all these applications. So, actually, if we go to manage extras, we're going to go down. I have the Couch Server Pro, that come, that's the uh, web browser. Last FM, that's obviously kind of like Pandora, but for the most part, just more global. Uh, maintenance is obviously this program here. Media player is the standard little media player that allows you to play other media uh, files. However, it doesn't do everything and it doesn't do a lot of the stuff that I need. So that was a big letdown to me. Um, I didn't use the remote stuff because I have Apple's remote app that's fine for me. RSS feeds, you can actually see RSS feeds on there. I get it on my phone and my iPad. That's I'd rather not have that. Weather, it's very, it's not very powerful. Yeah, it gives me the weather. Great, I get it from my iPad, my iPhone, my iPhone's always on me anyway. So, uh, I also installed uh, Neato TV. I didn't, I don't need it. It's pointless to me, I guess. I really didn't understand exactly what more it offered. It gave me another weather app, and it's not that great. Plex Client worked right out of the box, exactly what I needed, and it actually plays every file format that I've thrown at it yet. So, uh, and then XMBC, I've had nothing but troubles with since I've installed it this time. So let's go ahead and get right into the, the first few options. So that's that's obviously the setup options. Um, one of the other things, so let's actually let's just start by media. Media is the standalone media player that's going to come with the ATV flash that you can put in. Uh, basically, you just uh, once you uh, add your to your library, which um, if I go to library here, I can actually scan for changes um, or um, you can add things to your library, and that's actually, I think, done up here, yeah, so library, um, um, there we go, manage, manage shares, I guess, and you can add your own share by setting it up, now 13 is, that's my computer that I, t that I always use, um, so that's what I set up for my share setting there, but if I go, uh, of course I backed out too far, my fault, um, if I go over to my files, I go down to select that share that I set up, this is going to be the media files that I've shared. Um, I haven't actually tried protected files from iTunes because I have a lot of movies that I've actually purchased myself through iTunes. But let's go to my media folder because I'm going to show you one video that doesn't like it doesn't like at all. So if we go to media and let's scroll down to my camcorder that I'm currently using here. This is the camcorder that is filming right now. I'm going to actually show you a video that. Uh, 
I currently have, I did actually for the, the previous review, the one that actually was the tutorial setup. So I have this one and this one. These two are the exact same file, except for this one is the actual ABC HD video that the camera literally produces. So if I hit play on this one, uh, I'm just going to hit play from the beginning. Give me just a moment while it loads and does its fancy little thing. Because I want to keep this in real time. I'd rather you sh see it in first hand. So right now it's saying you may experience slower, slower choppy playback. And that's because it's an AVC HD video. It's in MTS or MT2S, um, M2TS. It's so hard to play with those videos on a lot of devices. This doesn't do any hey, justification to it. Welcome so back to another video this is what it looks like. It's all this. sorts of... Um, I'm gonna kind of go back. Not even ways, uh, comes close to even working, to be honest. Yeah, that's great that you can see it, but it sucks. Now this is the same thing. I actually took an AVC HD video converter and converted into MP4 H.264 with my computer. Same video, just rendered it down so I can actually throw it in iMovie, even because iMovie won't even allow you to use MTS files or AVC HD video files. Uh, it, you have to convert it into some other format, Move or MP4 or something, and. You can just notice that it didn't give me the error this time to say, hey, you may experience bad playback. But there we go. That's streaming right out of my computer through the media player. Now, obviously the problem with this is that I had to have to take every single one of my video files that I have on my camcorder, which is many, many gigabytes. And I would have to convert every single one of them to actually use through this file system. Um, I also had a problem with uh, DVI format, which basically is this camcorder right here, my Panasonic, my older DVI camera. If I actually try to play this, which is an AVI DVI setup, it was giving me errors. Now maybe, maybe it fixed itself. I, I don't know. Maybe we should try it, right? Um, but it would error out on me before, and wasn't able to watch any of it. Now. I mean, obviously, keep in mind, these are all raw formats right from the video camera, so there we go, playback error. That's a .avi, a DVI, NTSC video format, no changes to it at all, right off the disc. I'm pretty dissatisfied with it, to be honest. So, while I can play MP4s and, and other standard uh, library things, I can, if I'm going to convert it into MP4, I might as well just throw it into iTunes and play it through iTunes and get it stock right into the iTunes app. So that said, I'm really dissatisfied with that. That also leaves me into the browser, which I'm very unhappy with. It's neat. I may able to look at, the web, uh, at websites. Um, and if you actually go to the settings first, you can actually set exactly what you want it to, to appear as. So right now it's set as an iPad. You can also set it to normal, which is more of a desktop. Um, so if I was to keep it in iPad mode, if I, I've, I was actually trying to say, hey, if I have a web browser in here, can I actually go to Pandora and watch Pandora, or actually listen to Pandora? Well, Pandora uses Flash, so I thought no, but I might as well try it. If I keep it in an iPad setting, if I go to Pandora.com, no matter what Pandora site I go to, Pandora slash login, whatever, I can get to the login screen, but as soon as I log in, it goes right back to Pandora.com and says, hey, you got an iPad, you got to download the app. Okay, so that didn't work. So I changed it to normal. I can get to the login, I can get to the login, login. If I trick it to go into login, uh, it'll basically... If I go to Pandora.com, it says you have to have Flash enabled to watch anything. So then I went to Pandora.com slash login.fm or whatever it is and got to the login, logged into my account, was able to actually see my account, but at the top it gave me a big banner saying you cannot listen to Pandora without Flash. Okay, well then I'm at a loss. I can't listen to Pandora. So, But I'm going to keep it at iPad just because obviously it's, it's going to be a little bit faster browsing because the websites won't download as much. But I'm going to actually just go over to one of the sites discovery.com that I was go that I visited um, obviously you can use the the nice thing is I can actually use the uh, Apple uh, remote app for the Apple TV and use the keyboard and actually play around with it like, but but I don't have a cursor first of all so there is no touching and cursing it takes a long time even with my internet connection I have a 20 meg internet connection didn't matter when I did this if I had a great internet connection with my PCs my my uh, tablets, my iPads, and everything like that. It didn't matter. This was slow as sin. The bad, other bad thing is, yeah, you can see everything, you can read things, but you can't play videos or anything through this. Obviously, you can see how slow it is just loading the page, and that's images. How long would it take to load a video? Incredibly long time, but it won't actually do it. 
it just doesn't do it. So, yes, it's a neat feature, but to be honest, I can AirPlay mirror my iPad or my iPhone directly onto the Apple TV with AirPlay and have a full-fledged browsing experience with touching on my device. So, this is a fail to me. Now, maybe to you, maybe it's neat. I think it's a complete fail. It's useless, especially with AirPlay mirroring now on the iPads and the iPhones. So, and the uh, and Macs for that matter, or even with PCs, you can get uh, another application. Maybe I'll do another review on that. That's called AirParrot. So, um, I'm gonna go back to the main menu and get out of this because this is a joke. I'd I, I'd inst uninstall this even if I kept this on there. XBMC, I might as well go to it and show you the interface, but I can't get it to work because it just keeps airing me. Maybe I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Um, I already set my computer to share via SMB technology like Windows because I have a Mac or a Hackintosh, really, as you've, as you've seen. But this is the interface. Obviously, if you had music and if you set it all up, it, it's a pretty neat interface for not having a, a touchscreen or an actual mouse or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and go to videos. I'm going to hit, well, obviously, I don't have any media in here, so I'm going to hit add videos. I'm going to go ahead and browse for that that folder. Right now I'm going to head down to SMB for Windows Network because I've, I have it shared via SMB. Go down to my work group. There's my computer. It's great. So I'm going to go down to 13. That's the one I have shared. Operation not permitted. No idea why. So then I go down uh, to Schuster, which is a networked hard drive that actually just shares information. Uh, operation not permitted in there as well. So I don't know exactly what's going on. But, you know, to be honest, I found exactly what I would want to use anyway. Um, so, to, and also to get out of XMBC, you have to come down to the power button down here. So you have to scroll down to the power. That turns the XMBC, or, uh, XBMC. I keep doing that. I don't know why. So, um, that's the first of several systems. Now, ever since I installed XBMC, actually, I've noticed that every so often my, my Apple TV likes to pause for up to like 15 seconds and then continue on even when I'm in the menu system here I don't know what that is maybe it's just a, f a faulty install of XBMC that I just I don't know what's going on but um, I'm gonna move on to Plex because Plex is the one that I really like now first you have to install a Plex server on your computer so the computer with all that media files you have to actually set up the uh, the Plex server install it tell it where your media is you don't have to you don't have to put the media in a special location. You can you can create a whole bunch of different shares. So uh, I don't know what's going on here. Hmm. Let's go back into that. Oh, maybe it didn't start up. Well, let me get let me, let me uh, run over to my computer and start the server. I guess I, when I restarted, it didn't restart. So there we are. I kicked the server on. It didn't uh, restart when I restarted my computer last night. So um, at the top, you can actually see the different folders. Now I set these up as separate media shares within Plex server. Really quick and easy to do. Last one I really liked about the Plex server is you basically create an account. You don't have to mess with your router to do any linking or anything like that. I did try it out on my portable, on my iPhone and my iPad. You can actually do it from any network connection. I even did it over cellular over my LTE network connection. Now obviously it was a little choppier. I have it set to reduce the quality so it wasn't going to eat my bandwidth. But you can do it which is awesome. I think that I can actually view my files from anywhere as long as I log into my Plex account it will automatically direct me to my Plex server. So um, I want to go ahead and go over to that same video we watched uh, before. Oh, I guess I should have just clicked the server. Um, so this is the folder that we were in before with the, that um, video from the previous tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and actually show you both of those videos in both the full AVC HD format because this is reading off the same hard drive. That's going to be this guy right here. This is the actual... I'm going to go to all of them. I don't want to see just the ones I haven't watched. Uh, sorry about that. I did have a quick phone call. I had... Uh, basically, we're going to have... I'm going to go over the same video. The this These two videos. This is the one I actually showed... These are both, I guess, the ones that I showed you in the original Media Player app. Now, if I click on this first one here, um, the one thing I didn't notice about the Plex server, even with the Apple TV, it is, is it's not very fast. Now, you'll see the information about the, the video here. H.264, Adobe 5.1. I believe this is actually my... Um, I wonder if it actually gives me the... Uh, There we go. So this is the Dolby 5.1, and this should be the actual uh, one raw from the video camera. Um, I wonder if it has any other uh, inf 
information here. Just wanted to make sure. sure. Basically, I'm going to go ahead and play this one. I'm going to play both of them. They're both going to be a little bit different. But they will both play the exact same, which is the best part. So this is the one. This is actually the ABC HD video directly out of the camcorder. MTS file. I didn't do anything to it. And it is an interlaced file, so usually interlaced system doesn't play very well. But Plex is actually doing a really good job serving this file to the TV in a format that actually gives you a full H, the full HD effect. Now, if I actually back back out here, and for some reason when I back back to the menu, to that list of files, it takes a little bit. I think it's because the length of my list is pretty big, and it's actually ha it has to generate at least part of that. So, I don't know. However, when you do it on the iPad or the iPhone, it actually works a lot faster. And you can kind of scroll through it and get a little more information, actually, to be honest. So once it finally clicks, there we go. I'm going to scroll down to the other one. This is the one that I actually have rendered into MP4 format. It still has got the H.264 video, but we're going to AAC audio. Um, same file. Obviously, you can see they're both different files, but they are ones rendered. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. So, I guess tutorial and review. When it comes to these to the servers and the media players so far, I have to go with with uh, with Plex because it, it works and it works really well. Um, it's not the fastest, but I think that has less to do with Plex. Actually, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to show you one one other video here. Let's go to uh, the same place. Um, I guess I didn't have my Panasonic put in here yet, but I have the DVI. This is another DVI4 format. It's an AVI video. Um, let's just, uh, I guess, uh, some unicycling. Why not, right? I'm a unicycler. So, I'll, either way, it's a an AVI DVI video. You can see it's interlaced on this one. It doesn't look the best. However, it plays. So, it doesn't play through the media server, but it will actually play through Plex. So if it's me and it's me adding something to my Apple TV out of all the things that I could actually add through the ATV system for media f format and that's actually what I really want to do. I want to be able to actually play my various videos that I've actually recorded with my own video camera. That's what I want to play on the system. This is going to be my number one option. Now uh, last FM I'm going to go through it real quick because it's Pandora for the most part. It's just, it's not Pandora, I guess. It's very similar. I haven't actually noticed any of the, uh, um, you know, I'm going to turn the audio off because I don't want to get into the whole situation where, uh, whatever, so for copyright issues. But you, you can pick whatever, whatever, Beatles Radio, great. Uh, and you can listen to them all you want. The nice thing about it is it gives you the album cover, gives you all the information that you want to know about it, gives you the title, the per, you know the the artist as well as the album, tells you everything about it, which I think is awesome. Um, and of course, you hit next, goes to the next one. It, obviously, if you pick a certain radio station, just like Pandora that I'm used to, uh, if it, you know last night I you basically just get a similar artists. It tries to it uses a different algorithm as, from, as far as I can tell, um, but. If you, you you don't have to log in, I don't believe, but you like I've logged into it because I have a last FM account. You basically get a lot of really neat things, so a lot of good playing things like that. Not a whole lot to dive into if you know what Pandora Last FM is. You'll know what the what it does. Weather. I'm gonna turn the audio back up just. Again. Oh, I guess it's still playing in the background. Um, so this is the weather app. This is where I live, Dubuque, Iowa. I set up my my uh, location. You can set up multiple locations. Um, if I actually press and hold, select, this is where I can actually add locations, edit the location, do whatever. But it gives me my forecast for the foreseeable future and information based on it. If you actually had multiple locations, you just basically thumb over. You can see where you can go right or left. It'll actually tell you the other location that you would have added, added in. I had two locations and I just removed one just back, back down so I know where it goes to every time. Simple. It is neat, but... I have my phone on me all the time, and I get radar and everything else through there, and that's what I get most of my stuff through. So, And the last one I'm going to go through is the RSS reader. It has uh, ones that are actually already in here. Now, obviously, you can add your own RSS location, figure, and gadget. Uh, you can actually see that and actually read the actual article, which I think is, is great. I mean, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, to be honest... I have a phone and an iPad. I don't need to do it through the TV like this. It's more cumbersome, I guess. It's a lot easier with the Apple iPad or the iPhone because you can touch the screen. Or, you know, if you have any other device even, a computer even. 
Uh, now, obviously, the laptop, you have to get the laptop out and all that stuff. The iPhone I always have with me. So, um, with that said, whether or not this is something that you want to do is completely up to you. If I was to tell them anything, it's get the browser working better because right now it's a joke. And to be honest, I don't know what they could do to get it working to the point where I'd actually want to use it. Now, I have used Google TV. And by all means, I think they are so much better than the Apple TV at doing certain things. But they are missing things that the Apple TV has. And the Apple TV is so much easier to use. And this is not going to be a review of one versus the other. But it's the browser on the Google TV is ten times better with the browsers on this. So Google Chrome is much better than what this can do. Um, but I think it's more in the, you know, there is no mouse, there is no cursor, there is no ab ability to actually completely control the screen. So that's a complete loss of use. Um, XBMC, I wish I could get it working, but I'm not going to horse around with it anymore. Because it seems like as soon as I loaded that, I get everything kind of run, has run slower, so it's kind of weird. But Plex, Plex is the one. Plex is my go-to. Uh, now, I wish the Media Center could actually play the ABC HD format, but... Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, so that is ATV Flash. So, at the end of the video there, I don't know what caused it, just lack of memory. The Apple TV decided to restart, and that's happened several times since I installed multiple things. Now, I think what it is is actually I have too many things installed, so you can't install everything and expect it to work all the time. So, with that said, I'm going to be removing most of those things, but I will be keeping Plex at least for now because it is something that I can use. However, with Plex on the iPad, or the iPhone for that matter, you can AirPlay. So that menu system that you saw before with me hitting back, it being kind of slow, this is that same menu system on the iPad version. So I can try to do this without you seeing. Basically you can just scroll through. It even gives you the nice little thumbnails for every single video just like the Apple TV did. However, as you can see, it's a lot faster. Now if I go up to those, that video I did before, so I choose that video, it'll tell you everything about that video here in just a moment if I if I figure out, well I guess it's playing right now. Actually, I guess I had to hit the info button. But I hit the info button, it'll actually tell me, okay, it's this, and then I can actually hit the dot, 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 and it'll actually tell me everything about it. Even the bit rate and everything about that video. You can get a lot of information through the iPad and the iPhone version. So while I will, uh, I may be taking Plex off the Apple TV, I'm not going to stop using it. I actually really like it. And using it through the iPad, air playing it to the TV, that's the way to do it, I think, because it's a lot faster, a lot easier to use. So, if it was me, and I was looking at where to invest my money, the Apple TV is an awesome investment. You can't go wrong with that. And if you have an iPhone or an iPad, invest the $4.99 for the Plex app, install the free server on your computer, and skip jailbreaking your Apple TV. With that said, if any of the other devices that I showed you, or if you know, if you you know, you're pretty sure you can get XBMC to work, and you want to use that kind of system, do it. Or if you don't want to have to have the iPad or iPhone or some other device with you to AirPlay, do it because there's a lot of really neat things that you can actually completely customize within the Apple TV. One other thing I did know is that. Maybe there's a setting within the, the maintenance module. In the past, I could actually click over, let's say, on the Netflix app. Click and hold the center button. And it would just be like if I clicked and hold on my iPad. Everything would start to shake and I can move that icon around. Now that I have it jailbroken, if I click and hold, it actually shuts down the system or puts it to sleep. So I don't even know how to move my, my menu around. Now, it wasn't a big deal, to be honest. I really didn't care. And I haven't really dove into it because of it, but that's just one of those things that is just kind of weird that they would have changed that. So, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of rambling at times, and uh, I know that I, I almost kind of wish I would have stayed with it more, but you know, I got, I've played with it so much in the last couple days now that I was, I felt, you know what, I did, a, I think I did a pretty good thorough investigation of what I like and don't like about the ATV Flash, and I hope I at least portrayed in, onto you exactly what I do and do not like. Now, obviously, everybody's going to be a little different. If you have video formats that are more file-friendly with that media um, player that is built into the ATV Flash, great. Then maybe you don't need the, the Plex, but Plex actually it works really good, especially if you have a lot of media, and I have a lot of media. 
not just the stuff I've recorded for you guys, but also stuff I've recorded of my family and me and doing other things. So all those formats, the AVI and the AVCHD, I don't want to have to convert every single one of those video files to play through my computer or play through my TV. So with that said, I'm going to be sticking with Plex. And I think I'm going to be unjailbreaking this puppy and going back to the stock software So, because it was definitely more reliable without it being jailbroken. Now, I, it may not have anything to do with jailbreaking. It may be just that XBMC because as soon as I installed that, that's when, that's when all of my problems started. So I may be just installing uninstall uninstalling some of them to see if it actually fixes that issue but with that said i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments post below or send me directly uh if you have any recommendations for future videos or if you you know of anything that you wanted me to try out on the apple tv or any other device for that matter please let me know and uh again thanks as always for watching and i appreciate all the support for all my loyal listeners and viewers listeners yeah i'm pretty sure you just listen and not watch right uh yeah, with that said, take care. This is the Gooch saying thanks for watching.